Second Corinthians chapter 10. Second Corinthians 10 verse 3. The Bible says, Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Let's continue with spiritual warfare. Begins by saying, Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war against the flesh. But though we occupy, to walk is another word of occupying. Though we occupy in the flesh, in this human nature, we do not war against the flesh. In other words, our contention, I want you to pay attention on this. Our contention is spiritual. Our warfare is spiritual and not carnal. Those are two things. Our warfare is spiritual and not carnal. Because to be spiritual is not necessarily to be truth. To be spiritual does not necessarily mean it's truth. Not everything that is right is correct. You know that? Not everything that is right is correct. Even witch doctors are spiritual. Diviners are spiritual. But their spirituality is carnal. So though we walk in this flesh, our warfare, our contention is not after the flesh, is not carnal. Verse 4, he says, For the weapons of our warfare, Ah, shalia brande koj lavrahatij lavate. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. For the weapons, weapons are our implements, they are our tools. I love this word, armor, which we're going to look after when we'll be going to Ephesians chapter 6. So, our, our instruments, the weapons, the tools, the armor, the, the, the armor of our warfare is not carnal. And I love that the scripture is so clear on that, that word, our, because spiritual warfare is, is not for them that are in the world. They've already been conquered of the devil. Scriptures say uh, you were once living under the rulership of the spirit of the ruler of, uh, of the air who is now at work in the sons of disobedience when you're in the world so spiritual warfare is not for them that are in the world them that are in the darkness them that are in the bondage the, them that the devil has imprisoned so for our warfare our means company our believers the company of believers our our armor or the tools, the instruments, the implements of the Christians, the company of Christians is not carnal. Is not carnal. Is not pertaining to the flesh. It's not bodily. It's not temporal. But it is mighty. It means it's powerful. Mighty means it's capable. Mighty means it's strong. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty, they are powerful, they are capable, they are strong. Through God, through God, never forget this, that you, our spiritual warfare is only made victorious through God. Through God, it is in Him. We live, we move and have our being. It is Him that is greater that is in us than he that is in the world remember it's a, the condition about the world and that which is heavenly the spiritual and that which is carnal praise the lord jesus christ so 
our our success is dependent on us fighting through God for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty, they are so capable, they are powerful, they are strong through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Now I want you to, to listen to this. To the pulling down of, of strongholds, to the, demol, to the demolition, to the extinction of strongholds. A stronghold is a fortification. A stronghold is also an argument. Remember when I was talking of ignorance and we read a verse in 2 Timothy 2.23 but foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing that they gender strifes. An argument is a stronghold. It's a fortification in the mind. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is why our, our warfare is not carnal. It's not bodily. It's not fleshly. It's not pertaining to the flesh. But it is mighty. Our weapons are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Now I want you to understand that we do not wage warfare by fists. We do not beat. Uh, it's not like boxing. Okay, it's boxing, but it's not physical. It's spiritual. And you need to understand things that are spiritual. Because there are strongholds in our minds. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. A stronghold is an argument you've held for the longest time since you were young or since you learned or read a book or you heard someone speak. It's a fortification in the mind that needs to be brought down. Because many people are losing battles. Many, many people are still in bondage. Yet they are in the church. Many people cannot move on. They are stagnating. And they've tried all manner of spiritual warfare, quote and unquote. But it seems not to work. Because there are arguments in their mind. There are fortifications they have placed over the ears that is bringing them to this place of stagnation. And that is why the Bible says we need to cast down imaginations. This is now spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare involves the casting down of imaginations. That you, can, you, you, you sit down. Do you know the Bible says that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever ask or even imagine? By the power that worketh in us, and that's the Holy Ghost. There's the power given to human beings called the power of imagination. And it's there in Genesis, the ones that were making the Tower of Babel. The Bible says, now the people is one, and whatsoever they have imagined to do, now nothing shall stop them. I'm just paraphrasing. That's the power of imagination. And many of you, the battle is in the mind that you imagine a lot of loss and you always live in loss. That you, your imaginations are always losing, getting sick. And that's where you give the devil a foothold. He comes in and he articulates your, your thoughts, your imaginations, your reasonings, your computation, your thought, your, con your consciousness. How have you patterned your imaginations? That's why the Bible says, For the weapons of warfare are not carnal. Do you understand now? But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. It's here. It's here in the mind. Casting down imaginations. Imaginations. Imaginations bring about imaginations. Things begin to emerge in your life. And every high thing... Every high thing, every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge, the knowledge, the knowing, the knowing of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Bringing to captivity what? Every thought, every perception, every intellect. Every disposition, every device, every mind, every perception. You have lots of 
school of thoughts, you have to always scrutinize them and bring them into captivity to the obedience of Christ. This, this is spiritual warfare. It begins in the mind. It is clear as the Bible has said, as a man thinketh, so he is. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And the mind is what forms the soul. The mind, the intellect, what you think, the heart, what you feel, the, 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 what you what you what you feel, and the emotions. Okay, interchangeably. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So we have to come to the place where we understand that our warfare is spiritual and not carnal. And that God has given us weapons, instruments, the armor, turn to Ephesians 6, the armor through which is so powerful, so strong, capable of bringing down, pulling down, demolishing, bringing to extinction every stronghold every argument every fortification and casting down these imaginations these reasonings these computations the thoughts that have exalted themselves against the knowledge the knowing of god and bringing into captivity every perception every intellect every device every mind or thought that is against the obedience of Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 6, verse 12, the Bible says, okay, let's begin verse 10. Verse 10, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor. Armor is another word for weapon, the tool, the instrument, the utensil, the implement God has given us to wage good warfare. And by the way, when the Bible says or talks of the good warfare, it means it's not supposed to be to be one that we are struggling. To be one that we we are being beat down as though God is not around. It's a good warfare because there's an advantage. We have an advantage. We have the helper. A helper is one who has an advantage over you. And that's the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, put on the whole armor of God. The whole armor of God. The whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So there are wiles of the devil. There are arrows the devil will shoot. So you need to put on the whole armor of God. And there has to be a balance in the body of Christ. Because some have exalted some doctrines more than others. There's no problem in doing so. But there has to be a balance. There has to be a balance. Wholeness. Wholeness always brings victory. Where there is wholeness, where there is unity, where there is oneness, where something is whole, there is always an establishment. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against one principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places wherefore take unto you the whole armor the whole armor of god that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand stand therefore having your loins got about with truth now we are getting this is the armor now having your loins got about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet showed with the with the preparation of the gospel of peace 
and above all taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God praise the lord jesus christ if life is spiritual and so is our warfare then there's something you must understand that if it is not carnal if it's spiritual there's there's the language or there's the tendency there's the form through which spiritual things take or partake of and those are words you're learning now words are spirit words are very spiritual because if life is spiritual and so is our warfare then we must understand the currency used in the spiritual realms and that is words those are words in john 6 verse 63 jesus christ is speaking and he says it is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profiteth nothing the words i speak unto you they are spirit and they are life the words i speak unto you they are spirit and life all words are spirit but not all words are life i hope you're getting this all words are spirit but not all words are life and we have been given because it is us who who fight this spiritual warfare it has been given unto us the bible says in proverbs 18 verse 21 death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof death and life are in the power of the tongue so all words are spirit but not all words are life praise the lord jesus christ so it depends with how you use your words jesus says the words that i speak unto you their spirit and their life and proverbs 18 verse 21 we learn that death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Now, now how do you how do you fight spiritual warfare? Someone has spoken against you. Someone has, uh, maybe you've heard that words have been spoken, ill words, a curse has been given unto you. That which even is without cause, or whatever, uh, whichever way it, it's coming, they are perverse, coerce words against you. Let me tell you something. Words are cancelled by words words are cancelled by words the bible says that no weapon this is isaiah 54 verse 17 that no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper and then he says and every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment what shall happen what shall happen the bible says thou shall condemn no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. It means there's no weapon that is formed against you that shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise, so tongues rise, tongues, they, 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 they come with life or death, they rise. And if any tongue rises against you in judgment, you, you, not God, you, 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 you're the one who fights. Someone has said something about you, Someone looked right in the face and told you, you are a fool. You will never, uh, you'll never add up to anything. You're the one who cancelled. I don't know if someone heard me. Words are cancelled by words. The Bible says, you thou shall condemn. And this is what the Bible says. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And the righteousness is of me, says the Lord. Are you, are you a servant of God? Am I speaking to servants of God? spiritual warfare we've been given the power in our tongue that death and life are in the power of, of, of the tongue and those who love it shall eat the fruit thereof the bible says in proverbs 18 21 they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof 
So will you just sit there and someone speaks or some things are done to you yet you have life in you? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. That is why in James, James chapter 3, from verse 3 to 13, the Bible says, Behold, we put bits in the, in the horse's mouth that they may obey us and we turn about the whole body. Behold also the sheep which Though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listed. Behold also the sheep, which though they be so great are, di- are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, with 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 us whithersoever the governor listed. Even so, the tongue. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasted great things. Behold, how great a matter of a little fire. How, behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the cause of nature. And it is set on fire of hell. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You can continue reading all the way to verse 13. He says how every kind uh, every kind of beast and of the birds and of the serpents and the things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind, but the tongue can no man tame. It is unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Now, if if only as we've read in Proverbs 18:21. You love life. Or you know how to use this tongue. You shall eat the fruit thereof. And the only way you're going to learn how to tame the tongue. Is through the help of the spirit of God. Because words are a creative force. Did you know that? How did God create the universe? It was by words. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 verse 3, Through faith we understand that the words were framed, were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. David and Goliath are in the battlefield, and Goliath comes even with words before he begins to fight. And he begins to mock the Israelites. He begins to mock the armies of King Saul. And David comes and says, You come to me with a sword and a spear, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, Jehovah Sabaoth. So David never just engaged himself in the physical warfare. Now you understand that our warfare is not carnal, spiritual. And the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Every argument Goliath brought, David countered it with words. Hallelujah. I hope someone is getting this. David countered it. He says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine who mocks the armies of the God of Israel? Even before you begin to to, to to, to do anything, you must understand that words are spirit. The words I speak unto you, they are spirit and their life. Now, I want us to look deeper at this armor, the armor which we've been given. The Bible says, Stand therefore, having your loins got about with truth. With truth. Truth is what you should gut your loins with. That shame should not come. Imagine you having no belt and you're just walking or you're standing before people. You'll be ashamed because the pants will fall down. So we should gut our loins with truth. And truth is what God has said. Truth is Jesus. Truth is the word of God. He is the way. He is the truth. What has God said? Because the promises of God are yes and amen. As you're going to engage yourself in spiritual warfare, 
to pull down strongholds that are in the mind. As you're in the place of prayer, you just begin to declare the promises of God. Oh, you begin to say, Lord, you're not a man that he should lie. Neither are you the son of man that he should repent of your ways. You said it, you're going to do it. This is spiritual warfare. You don't just go without truth that around your loins. You will be ashamed. Shame will be your portion. And it shall never be. Because truth is here. And Jesus is the truth. We have the word. Somebody say we have the word of truth. Hallelujah. And then he says, he says, And having on the breastplate of righteousness. Where is the breastplate of righteousness? Put on the chest. You must know that you are the righteousness of God. And that no matter the wilds, because we read that the wilds of the devil will, 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 will come so that you may stand against them, so that you'll not be pierced. And the chest, that's where the heart is. When the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, because out of it flows everything to do with life. The chest is, the, the chest cavity, that's where all these essential organs are. Now, you must understand the righteousness of God that has been put on us by the virtue of Jesus Christ dying on the cross. This is the armor which you should have it in its wholeness because I said wholeness brings establishment. Hallelujah. And your feet shod with the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace. How beautiful, how pleasant at the feet of those who bring this good news of peace. We do not, we do not glory when men die in as much as it's a witch doctor or it's, it's a, in as much as you, you now dreamt of someone coming or doing some funny things. Now you wake up and because you have the power of death and life is in your tongue, you begin to fight against them. The same witch doctor you want to kill still belongs to God and God is also after their soul. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. That God still wants to save them. So as you're engaging in spiritual warfare, you should guard or you should have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And do you know what peace is? Check the ministry of Jesus. And above all, taking the shield of faith. I'll take time another time to just get deeper in this, the armor of God. But let's continue. It says, taking the shield of faith. The shield of faith. I don't know if you've read First Peter. First Peter chapter 5 verse 8 the bible says be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour and how do you resist him he says whom resist steadfast in the faith knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world the way we resist the devil steadfastly is in our faith praise the lord jesus christ and that is why it's a shield when no matter how many arrows are, are thrown at you, once you have a shield, they can never come to you. Let me tell you, no matter the witchcraft that is done against you, no matter the, the things people do for you or the devil has planned for you, if you have faith, the Bible says you can move mountains. The shield of faith is there to make you quench the fiery darts of the wicked. The fiery, the fiery darts of the wicked. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And I love that he says, and take the helmet of salvation. Again to the mind. Where is the helmet worn? On the head. And what are you guarding? The mind. The mind. The mind. The thoughts. The process. The thought process of your belief the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god after that now once you have the truth what god says the righteousness of god gospel of peace the shield of faith 
helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, you can now pray. How do you pray? Ephesians 6, 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Praying always, praying always with all prayer. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. In Romans chapter 8, the Bible says, For we do not know how we ought to. Likewise, this, uh, Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities, our weakness. For we know not what we shall pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Now this is where you yield to the Spirit of God. Once you have the armor of God and you begin to pray in accordance to the leadership of the Spirit of God. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praying always with all prayer and supplication. There are different types of prayer. The levels of prayers. The intensities in the prayer. In prayer. And supplication in the spirit. And I'll teach this another time. But at least you've understood a little bit of what the spiritual warfare is all about. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Now can you lift up your voice for one minute. And speak to the Lord. Speak to the Lord for one minute. One minute. One minute.